The Avalanche of Cash is at the Crump Nugget every Monday and Tuesday in January from 2 to 4 p.m. One lucky winner will be chosen every 30 minutes. The $53,000 Cruising Cash Giveaway is here Friday, 6 to 9 p.m. Win $200 every half hour. Saturday from 6 to 8.30 p.m. Get another chance to win $200 every half hour. One lucky cruise winner will be chosen at 9 p.m. Football Super Sunday. Join us February 3rd at the Nugget Event Center. Doors open 90 minutes before the game with stadium buffet and drink specials. Limited seating available. Buy your tickets now through February 2nd. Tickets are $25 per person. Come get your game on at the Crump Nugget Hotel and Casino. At Healthcare Partners Medical Group, our mission is to provide the highest quality of health care to each and every patient. With five locations in Pahrump, we are local doctors you know and trust. We want to thank you for choosing us. Quality care starts here. News 46 is brought to you by Healthcare Partners. News is also brought to you by Comfort Hospice Care, where we give our patients and their loved ones peace of mind, knowing we provide the highest quality of care 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For more information, call 775-751-0349. News is also brought to you by Hope Cancer Care of Nevada, providing quality cancer care in a spa-like setting. We are Pahrump's only chemotherapy center. Call 1-800-881-4226. News is also brought to you by Bees Embroidery and Garment Printing, specializing in custom and personalized decoration of gifts, garments, and more. Call 775-727-9444. Tonight on News 46, Congress passes the No Budget, No Pay Act. Two people are transported following a two-vehicle accident. An Act of Kindness Award is presented at the Town Board meeting. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46. With Doug Brindle and Monique Mitchell. Local coverage from Deanna O'Donnell. News 46. Local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Wednesday, January 23rd. I'm Glenn Evers. And I'm Monique Mitchell for News 46. The House of Representatives voted today to approve a three-month extension to the debt limit in a bill that concurrently pressures lawmakers to adopt a budget or have their pay withheld. The vote passed by a count of 285 to 144. The bill known as the No Budget, No Pay Act of 2013 directs both chambers of commerce to adopt a budget resolution for fiscal year 2014 by April 15th of this year. If either body fails to pass the budget, members of that body would have their paychecks put in an escrow account starting on April 16th until that body adopts a budget and pay that was withheld would be eventually released at, at the end of the current Congress, even if the budget doesn't ever pass. Democrats also pledged today to pass a budget in the Senate this year. The Senate has, has not passed a budget resolution since April 29th of 2009. Well, members of Nevada legislative money committees are beginning a preliminary review of Governor Brian Sandoval's $6.5 billion general fund budget proposal. The Legislative Commission's budget co subcommittee begins hearing today in Carson City. The panel encompasses members of the Assemblyways, Means, and Senate Finance Committees. Lawmakers will get a general overview of the governor's budget that will be followed by briefing on capital improvement projects and budget proposals for K-12 schools and the Department of Education. Preliminary budget hearing on various state agencies continue through next week. The 2013 Nevada Legislature convenes February 4th for a 120-day session. A minivan and a Jeep collided yesterday afternoon at the intersection at Highway 372 and 160. Tonight's accident report is brought to you by Stovall & Associates. Don't expect insurance companies to have your best interest in mind. Stovall & Associates cares. Let us help you if you have been involved in an accident.
A two vehicle accident yesterday afternoon here at Highway 160 and 372. Peronton Valley Fire and Rescue arrived on scene along with Nye County Sheriff's deputies and Nevada Highway Patrol to find one Jeep actually up on the curb and a minivan in the roadway with major damage to the front of that car. One driver of the Jeep was transported here locally to Desert View Hospital. That was a male driver. The female elderly driver of the minivan was transported as well via second ambulance to Desert View Hospital. There was an additional passenger inside the Jeep who sustained no injury in this accident. No other occupants were inside the minivan. Nevada Highway Patrol Sergeant Carlos Rivera tells News 46 that it appears that the Jeep was traveling in the southbound lanes on Highway 160 when the minivan driver either appeared to make a left or a U-turn in front of that Jeep. That is when the two collided. He also added that with the flashing yellow light, that might have been something that confused the driver of the car. This is something that has changed recently here on the highways. People need to be cautious during that. When it is a flashing yellow, you need to yield to the vehicles. This is Deanna O'Donnell on Highway 160 and 372 for News 46. All right, folks, we'll keep it here because we'll have more news for you after this break. This portion of the news is brought to you by Dr. George Leakes, a Rumps optometrist since 1990, offering full-spectrum eye care for children and adults. Call today, 727-8300. Former Nye County Emergency Services Director Brent Jones has filed a lawsuit against Nye County claiming gender discrimination. Jones began work for Nye County January 31, 2005 and was terminated May 2, 2012. He charged Nye County with unlawful discrimination, harassment, and a hostile working environment. The suit claims Nye County unlawfully discriminated against Mr. Jones in the terms and conditions of his employment because of his sex and because of his refusal to adhere to sexual demands of his direct supervisor, who is Nye County manager Pam Webster. The suit asks for back pay, front pay, lost benefits, compensatory damages for emotional pain, suffering, inconvenience, mental anguish, and loss of enjoyment. Well, it looks like they're going to be talking about that for a while. <laughs> An Act of Kindness Award was presented at the Pahrump Town Board meeting last night to Gary and Geneva Hollis for their years of community service. Tonight we're here to uh, present an Act of Kindness Award. It's of two people. And if my memory is correct, like I say I'm 70 years old, senior moments, they're the two youngest recipients of Act of Kindness Award. And uh, I am looking around, but uh, might as well go ahead and get this done. Gary, Geneva, Hollis, we please come up. Everybody knows what the Act of Kindness Award is about. This has nothing to do with Gary's work or the position he did hold, has nothing to do with that. It's about what him and his wife has done on their own for the community and for the Knight County. So at this time, we'd just like to uh, present the Kindness Award. This is something I didn't expect. Uh, I really didn't know anything about it. Uh, I had no idea. Uh, it means a lot to Geneva and I. I mean, we. We don't do anything that we do for awards or personal gain or anything like that. We do it because we want to do it and because it, it makes us feel better that we're doing something for somebody else. Geneva, you got to read what it said there on the plaque. And uh, another pe person that uh, recommended you guys get this award was very specific about what they wanted to put on there. Tell me how you feel about it. I am still just shocked because you know, we do things, but I don't think we do that much. Yeah. And like Gary said, we get more out of it than the people we help because it's just so nice to see them happy. Butch made a point to say that this had nothing to do with your job because you guys do a lot of things in the background that are not related to you being a commissioner as well as being a commissioner. Tell people why you decided to do so many things where you reach out to the community. Oh, um, we've helped with the... Christmas and Thanksgiving dinner at the Senior Center for years. Um, let's just give them something special. And then last year, 
with the bicycle project. Mm -hmm. I saw some bicycles for sale at some yard sales, and I thought, well, let's pick them up, fix them up, and, yeah. you know, give them to the kids for Christmas. Yeah. And that project turned into, what, we've got 50 or 60 bicycles because Gary was in the hospital. They haven't gotten out yet, but yeah. they're, they're ready to go, and they'll be going next week. So, so let's speak about that. You were in the hospital. How are you feeling? I'm feeling uh, a lot better. I'm getting stronger every day. Uh, but it's uh, it's not something I want to do again. <laughs> But uh, it was a bit of a recovery process for you. I know that uh, a couple bypass, how many? Triple? Uh, yeah, triple bypass. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I was on the table for over six hours. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I want to thank everybody that uh, prayed for me and, and, and my safety. And, and it, it really meant a lot to me. Gary, Gary Hollis also said as soon as he gets on his feet completely after the surgery, he plans on starting back up his consulting business. A Connecticut company said Friday it has nearly finished installing state-of-the-art security equipment at a school to which students were moved after the deadly Newtown school shooting. Advanced Security Technologies installed a system to provide some peace of mind to Sandy Hook students, staff, and parents. Approximately a dozen security manufacturers donated equipment and Advanced Security Technologies contributed to the labor. All right, folks. Well, we're going to have more news for you after this break, so please keep it here.